Hi friends, it's Shari. Today I'm creating a really fun thank you card using a new stitching design for the embroidery hoop. So I have my embroidery hoop cut from some mermaid cardstock. I've already pulled out all of my threads and I'll be stitching this cute new mushroom design. Now this is my draft pattern so I did change some of the colors as I went and made notes on things to change for the final pattern that I will share with you. So I'm starting out with my red or my pink thread and I'm using all six strands. I'm not separating it. I like to fold it in half and that's what I thread through the eye of my needle. And I use a needle that has a pretty big eye because these are pretty big holes so I don't need to worry about it not fitting very well. I like to start in the top right corner. So that's where I'm starting on this first line which only has two stitches. And I like to go from top right to bottom left and I'm going to do a half stitch and do both the stitches and then I'll come back in the other direction and I'm catching that tail as I go. You can see that there. So I'll go back in the other direction and finish off the full X for this line. Next I'll move down to the next row. So I'll count over two squares and start the next row of stitches. And again, I like to go top right to bottom left. And I'll just catch that little piece there and I'll speed things up so you can see me stitch really fast. I really wish that I stitched this fast in real life, but unfortunately not. I can stitch pretty fast though. Then you can see I've went back the other direction on that second row and then I've moved down to the third. Now when I get to the fourth, instead of crossing over that white spot, I'm going to stitch the one stitch that's on the right side and then the two and then I'll fill in on the other side when I get back over to that side. So you can see I did the one, the two and now this is a longer row. Once I have all my stitches in, I'm to the end of my string here. Once I have that last stitch in, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put my needle under a couple of those stitches on the back side. It doesn't take too many. I usually do about three pull it through and then I can trim off the excess and I'll trim off the excess from the part where I started as well so I don't have any little tail that's peeking out behind the empty holes. Now I'm moving on to the white and to move on to the white I want to go ahead and start by tacking it under a couple of my stitches since I have some here to tack underneath and I'm doing that towards the top because I'm going to start with that one little white stitch in the top right corner of my design. And for all these I'll stitch the same going one direction and then the other. Of course this is just one stitch but when I move down to the spots that have more stitches I'll do the same method that I used before. So I'll speed this up again so that our video isn't too terribly long and you can see I'm filling in the white spots and I'm working from the top down to the bottom and then when I get to the bottom I'll be able to stitch the stem of the mushroom. I do like to try and map out where I'm going to go with my stitches like this to be the most efficient in my string and not have too many strings on the back side. Now I did run out of string before I got to the bottom so I had to add another one and you're going to see I have a couple tails back here because I had to add another piece of floss just to finish off my bottom row. So I've got two tails to trim off. This is from where I ended the last one and started this new one and then I will tack under this new thread and for this one I'm actually going to go up underneath these stitches. I already have two threads underneath that horizontal piece at the bottom and I want to keep it from being too bulky so I just found another place to do that. I'm moving on to my green. These are pretty simple because it's just two lines at the bottom. And I had a little knot there which I hate. <laughs> but it wasn't too bad to get out. And then what I thought I would show you is how I do these confetti stitches. Especially if you're going to do like I am doing and leave all of that paper unstitched. You know that mermaid paper I'm leaving that as my color. You can stitch all those. But if you leave it unstitched like I'm doing 
if you go from one spot to the other, you're going to have a trail between them that you might see through those holes. So I'm putting this in here to show you how I do the confetti stitches on a stitch like this where I'm leaving the holes empty. So I'm starting with that little yellow one that's in the top right and I just tacked my thread underneath the same line of stitches. So I've stitched that little guy and then I'm going back underneath the one I just stitched. So it's pulled right underneath into the same line. Now the next one I'm going to is down here in the corner. So if I go straight there, you can see that my thread went behind all those empty holes. So what I want to do is take my thread in a path that hides it behind the mushroom that I've already stitched. So I'm gonna tack it under these stitches here and head in the direction that I need for that next stitch, which is right there. Then I'm gonna flip it over and we'll stitch this guy. I'm moving on to the next stitch that's closest, but I'm not concerned about a path of thread here because I'm only going a couple squares over and where that thread is, it's behind some solid cardstock. It does not cross over any of the holes. So I'll stitch this third one and then I stitched it um, not in the normal direction that I do. So I'm just taking it out and redoing that one thread. That's what I was doing there. And then I need to go over to the other side. So you could just stop your thread and restart it, or I'm gonna go under my yellow stitch over to the stem. So I've tacked it under two stitches. So I've got it behind my stitched area now. And I need to go up to the mushroom cap. So I'm going to thread my thread up underneath the stem and then I will thread it over to that left side so that I've made a path of my thread that goes up and over rather than diagonal and I don't have to worry about seeing it through any of the empty holes that I'm leaving. And now I can stitch those last two confetti stitches, which I realize you can't really see on screen, but they're over there on the left side of the mushroom. So I've stitched this one, and then just to be safe, I'm gonna tack it underneath the corner of the mushroom cap, because this other one is a little bit further away than the ones we stitched before. And then I'll stitch my last little yellow square. And you, of course, do not have to stitch these little confetti stitches, but I just think they're a lot of fun. They would also be cute as um, beads. I think that would be fun too, and add a little bit of sparkle with some shiny beads. And now that all of the little confetti stitches are done, I can tack that thread underneath the stitches on the back and trim it off. And now I'm ready to do the final touches, which is some back stitching. I'm using a dark gray, but I think this would be really cute if you used some softer colors. If you were doing a pastel mushroom, you can really change up the colors on this to match your project. And I'm using four strands of floss for my back stitching. You could, of course, use a little less if you wanted a less prominent outline. I am leaving this stitching in here to show you how I do the long stitches. So I have a long line across the bottom of the mushroom, but I broke it up into three pieces, stopping it at the edge of the stem because I know I'm going to have a long stitch from the stem that comes up into the same hole. So that's a really good place to kind of break up those long stitches. Unless of course you want the look of stitching every square, which you could do as well and get a different look. So now that all of my back stitching's done, I can tack that thread underneath and my little mushroom is ready for my card. So now to move on to my card panel. I have a piece of fog cardstock here and I'm going to use the birch stencil background. I'm lining this up. I'm using my grip mat. This is from inside my stamp wheel platform and it holds my cardstock in place and it's also going to hold my stencil in place. And I'm just lining this up to make sure my trees are kind of placed where I want them to go. I am going to trim this out with a outside and stitch rectangle after I have my stenciling done. 
So I'm just lining up my trees so they're centered. They go off the top and the bottom. And I'm using Lost Shadow Distress Ink because it is a very pale gray. And I really like the subtle look that it gives this background. So it's not going to be too distracting from our beautiful mushroom that we stitched. And since these are really long pieces, I am holding them down with my fingers so that they don't move left or right as I stencil. So that's what I'm doing there is just holding down those long stencil pieces with my fingers so that they don't shift around when I bump them with my brush. And I'm just working my way around making sure I have a light layer of that gray. And you'll see here when I pull it off, it has this really cool tone on tone, soft foresty look for the background. I just love how that turned out. I just think it's so pretty. Now before I take it off my grip mat, I'm adding some metallic watercolor splatters. I'm using the white, which I know is really hard to see here on camera, but it gives this really subtle shimmer. Kind of looks like snow, although snow is not what we're going for. And then I picked the champagne gold, which is a really soft gold. So we're going to have some really soft gold splatters on there, and you can kind of see the shimmer. I'll set that aside to dry, and once it's dry, I'll pull out that outside in stitch rectangle. I'm going to line it up and run that through my die cut machine so I have a nice trimmed out stitch rectangle for my card. Next, I'll adhere this panel to a white card base. That's gonna give me that thin white frame around it, which I really think makes this pale gray background stand out even more to be framed up with the white. Then I'll move back to my stitch piece and I'm adding a background piece to fill in the open holes that I left. So this is a two and a half inch circle just cut with, with one of the circle stackables. I've put some glue around the outside, outside of the holes and then some dots on the back of the stitches. And then I like to press it with my hand because my hand will conform to the shape of this. So those stitches are gonna have more bulk and it's kinda kinda bound up in the middle and then the outside edges will be flat. And if you use your hand instead of a block, it will be nice and flat on the bottom and you'll have a little bit of a bump to the front where the stitches are. It doesn't take too long for that glue to set up. I did not cut any of that out. I did speed it up a little bit, but I wasn't holding my hands there too terribly long. Then I'll add a line of liquid glue around the outside edge and I'm putting on the frame, which I cut from some storm cloud cardstock. So it's a dark gray. And then the little pin is cut from narwhal cardstock. I really love all of these shades of gray together that makes that image inside the frame really pop. I've cut the word mush from some guava cardstock using Henry's ABCs, and I've just put them on my grip mat to hold them in place, and I'm dusting the bottom with some raspberry ink so I get kind of a light pink to dark pink look on these die cuts, which I think is really fun and makes them stand out. I'm going to line them up on my card where I want them, and I really like making the sentiment kind of Funky like this, not quite in a straight line. I think it gives it a whimsical look. So once I have those kind of placed where I want them, I'll just pick each one of them up, add a little bit of liquid glue to the back, and then drop them back into place. For the remaining part of the sentiment that says thanks so, I've pulled out the thanks, thanks, thanks stamp set and I'm pulling out the little thanks and the word so. I like that you can kind of mix and match and make your own sentiment. I've put them on a block and I'll stamp them in some hippo ink. So that's a darker gray than what I use for the background, but it's not a black. So we're sticking with all these gray shades to kind of give that softer look to the card. And now I can add some foam squares to the back of my little mushroom. I'm kind of trying to put them towards the middle because I know that I'm going to tuck some things in the edges. So I'll go ahead and put this on there and then you'll see that I'm adding some greenery. So once I have that in place, I've pulled out the Happy Mushrooms die set and I'm using that tiny little fern. I cut these from one of the green shades from the textured canvas cardstock pack and I'm just figuring out where I want them. I decided I wanted them all towards the bottom there just kind of like my hoop is sitting in some pretty greenery. 
So just like I did with the letters, once I have the placement looking the way I like, I'll pick each of those little greenery pieces up, add some liquid glue to the back, just some dots, and then put them back in place. Now I did want to add a little critter to my card, and I love this cute little snail that's from the Porcupine stamp set. And so I've stamped him out in some jet black ink. I'm coloring him with some Copic markers, and I usually color him with a colorful shell, but I wanted to stick with the gray tones that I have. So I'm using some warm grays for his shell, just adding a little darker, at the swirl and I'll cut him out with the coordinating dies and then I'll just add a foam square to the back and pop him right onto the card sitting on that greenery on the left side which I think balances it out nice gives you another little cute element. Now of course I always like to add some glitter for some shine so I'm adding some glitter to his shell I'm adding some glitter accents to my greenery pieces, and then I'm adding some glitter to the bottom of my letters where I dusted it with that other color of ink. And here is my finished card. I love how it turned out. If you're not into stitching, I think this would be really cute with one of the happy mushroom die cuts as well. And I did think of some other mushroom layouts that I really hope to try in the near future. So here is another look at that final card, and I hope it inspires you to make something and maybe stitch something. Have an amazing day. Bye.